Good morning. Good morning. Top of the morning. Top of the morning. And grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you on this fifth Sunday in the holy season of Lent and St. Patrick's Day. You would know that if you saw my tie, which has clover leaves on it. I am Will Robinson, one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church, and on behalf of Pastor Diane, and on behalf of Jane Upshaw, and this fabulous Crossroads Worship and Music team, woohoo! We do welcome you to this service of worship. We extend a special welcome to you if you are visiting here with us today. We have visitors every Sunday in person or online, and we are so grateful the Lord has led you to us this day. You are our special guests in this service of worship. Pastor Elizabeth is the, uh, another member of our pastoral team here at First Presbyterian Church. She is not here this morning because she is at Low Country Presbyterian Church, where her husband Dave is being installed as the associate pastor there. So we celebrate with Pastor Elizabeth and Pastor Dave and with Low Country Presbyterian Church. We do thank God that all of you are able to be here today. It matters to us to know that you are here. And how we do that in person is by asking you to take the red friendship pads or friendship registers at the end of your row, sign them and pass them down, and then back down your row so you can see those whom the Lord has placed near you and worship this, this day and can greet them here in a moment. For those of you who worship with us online, we also want to connect with you. You will see on your screen a QR code. So if you, that's one way at least for you to be able to let us know you are here too. Or you can go to our website. There's a blue connect button. You can click on that. There's a brief drop down form. And that also will allow you to let us know that you are here worshiping with us this day. And we don't just want to know you're here. We're grateful for that but we want to be able to connect with you. It matters to us that you are connected to the Lord here or through some community of believers. So we do that also through those fancy QR codes that you've just saw. There's a card on the back table. It allows you to connect with us, to give to our Lord's work through this congregation, to submit a prayer request as well. And we have other ways for you to submit a prayer request because prayer matters to us. And you can do that here in person. There are prayer cards in that friendship register, so you can grab one of those, or on the back table back there. If you need to step back there now, you can do that. Complete them, place them in the offering basket, the time of the offering, and then we will add them to our prayers of the church this morning that um, Elder Jane Upshaw will be praying this morning. And if you are online worshiping with us, you can send us your prayer request, again, um, through uh, the QR code. If you've got that card at home, if not, just send an email to me or Pastor Diane or Pastor Elizabeth. Um, you can access those on our webpage or our website, I should say, and then we will be glad to add your prayers to our own here. Just let us know if you want us to include that in our prayers as part of our staff meetings on Tuesdays or on our confidential prayer chain or both. But we do, again, believe in the power of prayer and want to add your prayers to our own here at the church. It is the holy season of Lent, and we have a special emphasis in Lent on prayer and on other practices of the faith. Uh, that's been a special emphasis in this season of prayer, or this season of Lent, I should say, by using the book, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. So this is the last of our series today. We'll hear a little more about gracious invitation and hope. And then we hit, believe it or not, Holy Week, beginning next Sunday. So you'll see here on the screen that we have Palm Sunday, awesome uh, opportunity to worship and, and celebrate the joy of of Palm Sunday at 9 a.m. here at the Crossroads Worship. We'll have our guest soloist, Terry Grant. Thanks be to God, joining us. And the children's choirs. So like last year, the children will be singing. It was packed. So bring your children, bring your grandchildren, parents, grandparents, guardians. We'd love to have them here. It's going to be a joyous, joyous worship service at 9 a.m. And then at 10.30, you'll see that we have the Requiem by Gabriel Faure 
Um, so as we move to the beginning of Holy Week, the Requiem prepares us for the Passion of our Lord. So we also celebrate the, with Hosanna's his entrance into Jerusalem. But then by the end of that day, we start preparing for Holy Week and his suffering and death. So we hope you'll be able to join us for that. And then between the two services, at 10 a.m., you'll see on this next slide, we have an Easter egg hunt right out here on our front lawn. Yes, Emmett will be there. We hope you will be there um, to be able to, to enjoy that. As you've seen our front lawn, we've done some really good work to it, and so I'm grateful to our facilities ministry and our PGA, our Presbyterian Gardeners Association, that PGA, for the good work they're doing on the grounds in this place. But we'll have it right out there on the front lawn. We hope you can join us with any grandchildren, children that you have in your own life to be able to celebrate that day with us. And then we have one more event uh, also on Palm Sunday, and that is a new member class. You'll see that here on the next slide. And the new member class, we hope that there are some of you possibly here or online who say, yes, that's the gift that I want to give to the Lord in this holy season of Lent, is to join with this congregation. So we do hope you'll pray about that possibility if you haven't yet joined and can join us in our mission of changing lives and making disciples here in this place. And then uh, next week, uh, or after Palm Sunday, I should say, is the beginning of Holy Week. And so you'll see in this next slide, um, with Holy Week, we've got several different uh, opportunities really to worship the Lord. Um, I'm going to mention before we get to, to Monday, Thursday, or we can hold that up there on the screen. Earlier that Thursday, we'll have our last organ and poetry. Um, so an opportunity to pause. Um, Rabbi Bloom will be here um, from Beth Congregation. Beth Yam uh, is the reader. And then our own Chad Martin, our interim organist, will be playing. So we hope you can join us for that. And then the Monday Thursday service at 6.30 p.m. right here, uh, I should say, in our church, so in the sanctuary. And you can see the seven last words of Christ on Good Friday. So the next day, a community service will be at Christ Lutheran, uh, Mid-Island, um, but Pastor Diane, Pastor Elizabeth, and I will be in that service and several other pastors and others from the community helping to lead that service on the seven last words of our Lord. So we hope you can join us. It's so important to pause in Holy Week to remember our Lord's suffering and death before we move right to his resurrection and celebration of that glorious good news. So I hope you will commit to Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday, or both, to really be able to, to walk into the depths of our Lord's suffering before we celebrate with joy on Easter Sunday. And that's the next slide. Easter Sunday, we will celebrate with joy at 9 a.m. here in Fellowship Hall, and then at 10.30, so the same times we usually meet. Bring flowers with you. We will have a cross here in, in Fellowship Hall, also a cross like we usually do right outside on the front lawn. So bring flowers from your garden, or you can buy some. Um, special services musically and with flowers at nine and just good liturgical opportunity for you to truly celebrate, enjoy the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And we hope for those of you online, if you can't be here, you will still be very much part of our worship that day. It is in that joy that we now rise in body or in spirit and greet one another in the name of the Lord, beginning by greeting those who are worshiping with us online with a wave. Good morning, church. Truly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We ask that you remain standing as you are able and join us in this popular hymn of the church, a little jazz version of Blessed Assurance.
God is so eager for us. He seeks us no matter what. Join in with us as we sing about the reckless love of God.
Amen. Amen, amen. Crossroads team, thank you, thank you. And indeed, uh, as we now prepare our hearts to hear the words of Scripture, the Psalms are the prayer book of the people, so to speak, and they are always offered to a God of overwhelming, never-ending love. The psalmist is eager in times of trouble and times of great joy to bring it all to God, to lift it to God in great honesty and in great trust. So now we turn to Psalm 130, and the translation I'm reading from is by Eugene Peterson, the author of our a book. And so it sounds a little different, but in a very uh, real way. So listen now for the word of the Lord. Help, God. I've hit rock bottom. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept records on wrongdoing, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit. And that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life a prayer and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till the morning, waiting and watching till the morning. Oh, Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it, he'll redeem Israel, buy back Israel from captivity to sin. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, waiting is hard, isn't it? How many of you like to wait? Any hands out there? How many of you love the doctor's office? Yay, you get to wait. And the DMV, my personal Oh, it's like the first circle of Dante's hell in there. I swear, it's just limbo, just waiting. And of course, there's waiting for our technology, that magic box that we carry in our hands. And even just that nanosecond before it lights up or when we press that send button and we wait to see delivered on the text, we're impatient, we're waiting. Can you even think back and imagine what it was like when we had our AOL dial-up. Let's see what we have here. Friends, that was 12 seconds, and didn't that seem like an eternity? I mean, that's how spoiled we have gotten. Oh my goodness, waiting is hard. And so to quote the late, great Tom Petty, the waiting indeed is the hardest part. And it's not simply that we're impatient, undisciplined, we want it now. When we wait, we're giving up control. And there's this not knowing, the sense of the future that we just can't envision. We hope, hope it'll be a certain way, but we just have to wait. And you know what that feels like when you're ill and you're waiting for healing. When you're alone and you've been hoping and praying for a community or for that good friend who understands you or for that partner in life. Or when you've been unemployed, interview after interview, resume, resume, you're waiting for that callback, for that offer. Or maybe, as the psalmist says, you've hit rock bottom and you're waiting for God only knows what. 
Well, friends, the world tells us that waiting, especially when it makes us uncomfortable or plunges us into uncertainty, that that's not normal, that that shouldn't be. In fact, Eugene Peterson observes in his book, there's an American myth that denies suffering and pain. And he's right, isn't he? Our culture tells us we should be happy always. On social media, we see that every post is carefully curated. Isn't my meal pretty? Don't my kids look great? Like my new hair? And I'm not mocking. I mean, that is what we are conditioned to do. Even the advertising that we see, you never see somebody struggling unless it is quickly followed by some sort of remedy. Ask your doctor for this medication or buy this and you too will be happy. So we begin to think that suffering must be some sort of personal failing. And so we turn away from those who are suffering and we're very careful to hide away our own suffering and pain. Well, Psalm 130 tells us a different story. We hear the psalmist speaking openly about his struggles because he's convinced that there's no part of life, no part of the human experience beyond God's care. And he's waiting with this expectant hope because he knows that God is good. God is always for us, never against us. And that suffering, while very real, will never have the final word. And you may have noticed that Psalm 130 starts, as many Psalms do, with that lone voice crying out to God. Help God, I've hit rock bottom. Master, hear my cry. But then it ends with this open invitation to community. O Israel, the psalmist says, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. Waiting in community can be a powerful thing. If you've ever been relaxing on the beach or maybe walking, you've probably noticed little crabs scuttling around. And while they look similar, they're each wearing very different shells on their backs. And those would be hermit crabs. Um, we can wait for one second, but there's an example of a hermit crab. And actually, that name hermit is really misleading because these little crabs love to be in community. And around the matter of finding a new shell when the time comes, it's life or death. And so they come together to help one another. Now, as you saw, we have a little video that I've taken from the BBC, and it is so good. I'm going to show you a little peek into the life of hermit crabs. So, Sally, please go ahead now and let's start. So this is Sheldon. He's our protagonist for today. He's come out to look for a new shell. He's found one, but look, it's big. Sheldon is small. He's measuring it with his little pinchers and feet, but it's not going to work for Sheldon. So he sits down to wait. And while he may look dejected there, Sheldon is waiting with expectation because he trusts that God has made his hermit crab brethren to sense when there's this need and to come together to help him. So Sally, let's go on and watch this next part then. So look, here come the other hermit crabs and look at the shapes and sizes as they come. The different shells they're carrying, big, small. 
but they all have one need. They need to find a new shell and they need one another. They're sizing each other up. They're not fighting, they're measuring. And look, they're measuring that shell. And just watch in a minute what they're going to do. They realize the shell doesn't fit them, but they're starting to line up in size order. Have you ever seen this before? It is so cool. Watch that little guy, the green ones, they're gonna go way to the end from little to big. Now here comes, this is the big dude that is gonna be able to fit into that shell. He's essential to the process. And look at Sheldon so happy, he's like, here he comes. He measures the shell and he discovers that it is going to fit him. He likes it. And so watch what's gonna happen. As soon as the big crab makes his move into that shell, everyone else starts switching into the next size up. It's like musical chairs. Isn't that amazing? Isn't God's creation truly amazing that they do this? And so watching hermit crabs reminds me just how much we need each other. And just as God has made the hermit crabs to seek one another out, so the Holy Spirit is always nudging us to come together. So when you feel that longing for community, don't ignore it. That is what God wants us to be. And when you feel like you should be that rugged individualist who handles all their problems on their own, I'm not going to bother the church, I'm not going to bother my kids, I'm just going to handle this, know that when we put that notion aside, Others can help us lift our needs into the hands of a loving God. And when you see that person who looks weary or anxious, or maybe they're trying just too hard to be happy all the time, know that we then as a community should come around them and alongside them and welcome them in because the church is called to be something that the world isn't. Here at First Presbyterian Church, Hilton Head Island, one of our values is gracious invitation. And do we have a slide? Look at that. There's Pastor Will working his holy welcome and greeting a, a visitor. And next to him is that word, welcome. Thank you, Sally. And when we think about gracious invitation, then it does have to do with sharing the good news of Jesus Christ out in the world, in our community. But gracious invitation also has to do with what we do when people come to this sacred space. How do we welcome them in? So think about an average Sunday like today, let's say. We're all rushing to get here, and maybe you really want to see a couple friends that you haven't seen all week, so you're heading right toward them. Or maybe you want to get to class or choir practice or whatever you need to do. Or you want to be here in time to hear Crossroads go through their final warm-up. And so maybe you don't notice that person over there in the gathering space who's arrived early and they don't have a name tag on and they're kind of just holding their coffee cup and they look awkward and out of place. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, this is God's nudge that gracious invitation would have you do a few things around this person's welcome. The first thing you probably would want to do and I know this is hard, especially if you're an introvert, and I'm actually an introvert. It's hard to go over and just, you know, cold call someone, so to speak. But you should go to them. And the easy thing to say is, hey, I'm Diane. How long have you been coming to First Presbyterian Church? And that's a safe and easy way because they might say, this is my first time. 
or they might say 25 years, and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> all you say is, hey, it's a big church, it's, I've been here 21, it's so good to finally connect with you, what took us so long? <laughs> but don't be afraid, because we are, we're afraid to ask, because we don't want to make them feel bad, or we don't want to look stupid. So that's gracious invitation. And then you might say, hey, come on, come sit with me. I've, I, you know, I'm here by myself, or my family's over there. Come, let me introduce you. Or maybe you say, after worship, meet me here. Let's go in the gathering space. We'll grab some of uh, Elizabeth Kale's famous coffee. So that's what can go on here in this physical space. Now, for our folks who are in our online campus, I'm talking to you out there. We want you to continue to feel like you're welcome, that you're a part of things too. And so when I first came here, I was so uh, just blown away to see that we wave to you because we imagine your little faces out there and we know that you are worshiping with us. And I love how, you know, Pastor Will has us invite you to take part in communion to get your bread and your, or your cracker and your water because you are part of us. We have two campuses, in person and our online community. And if you have ideas for ways that we can better connect you through time and space, let us know, right? Well, if they want to give Will or myself an email, Pastor Elizabeth, uh, Andrea Siebold, we want to keep you connected as well, because we know that everyone wants to feel seen and valued, welcome and appreciated. But of course we know, and I'd be foolish not to say, whenever you get people together in community, it is never going to be perfect. Uh, the church is a hospital for sinners. It's not a country club for saints. Life gets messy. <laughs> So we're going to take one more look at the adventures of Sheldon. Okay, so Sally, if you can put that last one on. Sheldon is going to get into his new shell. Look at him. But oh, what's happening? That big crab is coming in and he's pushing him out of the way. He's taking Sheldon right out of his new shell. Oh my goodness. It's becoming a wrestling match. Poor Sheldon, look, he doesn't have any exoskeleton to protect him, so there he is. The other crab is then getting into the shell. Sheldon's got to find a place where he's safe. And so, as the others walk away, he's left with a shell that he didn't choose. That wasn't the piece of real estate he had his eye on, but... He is going to settle into that shell. There he is. Hey, Sheldon. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think you maybe can see the uh, connection I'm going to make. As Christians, we wish we were always at our best, but we know that we're not. We come bearing heavy burdens. We come angry or frustrated at the world or simply scared or broken. And sometimes that self-preservation, that self-centeredness just kicks in. We are feeling vulnerable, wounded. So maybe, for instance, you come on in and you're used to sitting in a certain seat. And when you get there, somebody is in your seat. Okay, I'm going to give you a few steps, all right? <sighs> gracious invitation, gracious invitation. Okay, we're not going to wrestle that person out of our seat, are we? No, no, no. Maybe we can sit down next to them and say, hello. Or maybe even if we step back, and I'm not making light of it. I know it can be a serious thing. We step back and we think, I remember when I was new somewhere. And I remember how it felt to be ignored or for somebody to say, could you move, please? That's my seat. <laughs> or you may remember how it felt when somebody welcomed you in and made you feel like you were the guest that they had been waiting for. And you never know how God is going to use us. That one gesture, making room for them next to you, it may be the very thing that God wants them to know 
that there is a space for them, that they are not alone in whatever it is they're waiting for, however they are hurting. We never wait alone. And friends, that's the very heart of the good news, the very heart of Psalm 130, the very essence of what it means to live together in Christian community. There's no place that's outside of God's loving power. There's no need, there's no sin, there's no failing, there's no shame that cannot be lifted to God and ask God to help. And we, as fellow strugglers, should and can come alongside each one. Well, as Pastor Will mentioned, we're nearing the end of the Lenten season. And as we walk with Jesus, the cross is drawing ever nearer. And it is just a stark reminder that life is suffering. And even Christians aren't exempt from that. And so to get to that joy of Easter, we are going to have to go through the despair of Good Friday, the terrible silence of the darkened tomb as the whole world waited, waited for God to act. And as we wait in the midst of whatever pain and struggle or burden we are carrying, we hold fast to the hope that the same God who raised Jesus from the dead is working to make all things new, even us. The waiting is the hardest part, but friends, wait and watch for God. O oh, weary believers, deep in your struggles, wait and watch for the Lord. For with God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes gracious redemption. Amen. Amen. Gracious invitation is one of our values here at First Presbyterian Church, a value that emphasizes knowing the Lord and His hope, knowing the value of this community of believers. Thanks be to God. And it's because of that hope that we know in our own lives, that community that has been there for us, like those hermit crabs were for one another, that we do what we do in our ministries of service to others, our outreach ministries. One of those outreach ministries is Book and a Buck. You'll see a slide here on the screen. Basically, Book and a Buck is just giving new or gently used books for students preschool to high school. And then if you would like to, you slip a buck or some money in those books, that book or book that you provide, and you can bring it here to the church this Sunday, next Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, or you can bring it just to the church here, in the uh, church office, anytime during the week. So next Sunday and the next couple of Sundays, other than Easter Sunday, in the gathering space. But otherwise, you can just bring them here to the church or contact the church if you're online, and we'll find a way to be able to get that book. It is books for libraries, especially in Jasper, Hampton, and Allendale counties, counties especially in need, with students especially in need. So thank you for your commitment to ministries like that, that kind of gracious invitation in the life of this congregation. Let us continue in that hope in the Lord, in that spirit of gracious invitation, even now, by giving generously of God's tithes and our offerings. Amen.
Okay, thank you. It takes a village. <laughs> Please pray with me. God of mercy and grace, we come to you today to confess our brokenness. We live in a world that values the here and now, the quick and convenient, the over and done. We want the answers, and we want them now. Help us to learn the value of waiting and watching. Strengthen us to be patient, for it is patience that will give us the power to work through difficulties, discouragement, and detours. Help us to learn the virtues of perseverance, to follow your will in everything we do. Teach us, O oh Lord, to live in today, for you have made each day for us. Keep us focused on each day's work to serve the sick, feed the hungry, provide shelter for the homeless, and to serve you with our every act. When we are not focused on today, we will miss these opportunities to serve. Father God, we know that you have plans for our best life. If we but surrender to your will, help us to relinquish our authorship and take up our individual roles as characters in your powerful story. Remind us that we are called to invite others to follow your way. Give us the courage to make the gracious invitation for others to join and serve that they may share in the faith, hope, and love that you give us through Jesus. We lift up those who are dealing with personal challenges in their lives, sickness, financial difficulties, family problems, mental health issues, and we pray especially for these. Susan Roche. Susan, who is a patient at MUSC. Keith Gresh, who is, is dealing with stomach cancer and chemotherapy. Laurel. Jackie. Pat. Alex, and Eric, a family member. May each suffering soul that has been mentioned and those that are in our hearts who have not been mentioned out loud feel the warm and loving embrace of care and support that only you can give. Through Christ you have entered our world, walked where we walk, shared our life's burdens, and been touched by our joys and sorrows. Through the Spirit, you hear and respond to our prayers. We thank you that we need hide nothing from you. You know our longings and our desires, our fears and addictions, and all of our shortcomings. We thank you that you provide for our healing, our wholeness, our living together in harmony and justice. We can hardly fathom 
the depth of your unconditional love and care for each one of us. We praise you for every moment in which your light shines hope. There is so much war in our world today. We ask that you repair relations between and among all nations around the world. Strengthen the efforts of all who are working to restore peace in the Middle East, Ukraine, and Haiti especially. Protect the vulnerable who are suffering the ravages of war just because of where they happen to live. We pray for leaders of our government at all levels. We live in such a divided society. Help us to be brave enough to build bridges, not barriers, so that love and tolerance are part of our daily living with those around us. All this we pray in confidence and trust that your spirit is at work in the world, O oh God, in ways we cannot see or comprehend. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join us as we close out. It's been a wonderful service with a great message. Thank you so much, Pastor Diane, for the word of God. And I have to change what I'm going to have for dinner today. I will not have crab cakes. I, I, I'm not going to go there. But waiting it certainly is the hardest part. We thank you for the word of God and for the message and for this Crossroads worship team. I'm, I'm grateful for the talent that jumps in every week and bails me out. So <laughs> to God be the glory. Nobody but you, Lord.
to encourage Pastor Will and Dr. Jane to pass out the little beads. Um, so a couple quick things. First, just a clarification. Our organ and poetry series will be this coming Thursday. That's our final one, 11 o'clock Sanctuary. Uh, we have our beads on this nice uh, twine, and we are looking at a gold color bead for this week, invitation. If you all don't know what I'm talking about, all the supplies are in the back, but Pastor Will and Dr. Jane are coming around with the gold beads. That gold bead is reflective. It shines. And that's what we're supposed to do. We are reflecting the love of Jesus Christ into the world. Just like Will's smile. Look at that. Yes. So take one of these beads home with you, and your charge is to get in on gracious invitation. It may be that you just move through the world this week, shining the love of Christ, or it may be that you graciously invite someone to help you in your struggles and in your trials as well. But no matter what, go forth knowing that there indeed is nobody like our God who loves us with a love beyond all telling and who is with us in our valleys and our hills. So go forth and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Amen.